Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in today's video we're going to go over thermostats and how they work. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. In today's video we're going to go over thermostats and how they work. In front of us we have an HVAC training board that I engineered and built. Here's our thermostat, and when I think of thermostat, I think of the brains of the operation. From here, we can tell our system exactly what we want it to do. Let's begin our lesson by taking off the faceplate and seeing the insides. You just simply pull it off. Once you take off the faceplate, you now have access to all the wiring and terminals. Let's begin our lesson by going over what each stands for. Starting from the left, our G terminal is gonna be our fan motor, specifically our indoor fan motor or our evaporator fan motor. Our W terminal, as you can see, is not wired here, as in this replica of a control circuit. This is for an air conditioning unit, which only has cooling, but we're gonna go over each function. So W is gonna be our heating wire. C is gonna be our common for our power. Y is our cooling function. And R is our hot wire, our 24 volt hot wire. If you look closely, R and RC have a jumper. So essentially R and RC are the same thing. This is our hot wire. Let's begin by starting with our power wires. That is gonna be R and C. R is gonna be our 24 volt hot wire coming from our transformer. And of course, as we know, it has to complete a circuit. So power comes from the transformer from the secondary from here, 24 volts. And then it comes back common directly back to the transformer of our secondary and completes the circuit. So between R and C, we constantly have 24 volts here. And this is a constant circuit. If you really think about it, a thermostat is just a large relay. Once you understand how a relay works, life begins to make sense. So, one thing that's gonna stay constant here all the time is C. This is always gonna go back to your secondary on the transformer on one leg, and R does also come from the other leg of your secondary of your transformer, but as I said, this was a relay, so your power wire is gonna be changing around. I'm gonna explain that. Let's begin by going over our fan function. If you look here, we have fan, and once again, that is gonna be our G wire, our indoor fan. So right now, it's set to auto. So it's only gonna start if you set it to heating or cooling. But you can press this button, and you can turn it on manually, so your indoor fan motor will run on its own. We're gonna go over our manual function first. So between R and C, you should have your constant 24 volts. Like I said, this is a large relay. So when you set the fan to on, what happens is that R is now going to relay 24 volts. So it's going to send 24 volts from this wire, your hot wire, to G. So now you're going to have 24 volts here, and it's going to complete the circuit between G and C. So now you're going to have constant power here. And that is how that sends power to your starting component to your fan motor. In this case, and in many cases, it's gonna be another relay. So, G and common are going to energize a coil on a relay. And then once that relay is energized, the coil, a magnetic field is gonna be induced and it's going to close a pair of contacts and then send line voltage to your fan motor. So, once again, R is now gonna relay power to G, and now you have a circuit between G and C. Now let's go over the auto function. When your system is in auto, as far as the fan, it's only gonna start when you set the system to heating or cooling. Let's begin by going over the cooling. So, once again, R and C, constant power. What happens when you set it to cooling? Two things happen now. Once again, it's a large relay. So R 
is going to send power to Y, which is our cooling wire. And then at the same time, since we're in auto, R is going to send power to G as well. And they're both going to complete the circuit through C. So Y and C are having power. And then G and C are having power. And that is because R relayed that power to them. We described how the G wire and C are going to energize a coil, most likely for a fan relay. And as far as Y, now this is typically going to send power to a contactor because a compressor draws a lot more power. And this contactor can energize both your compressor and outdoor fan motor or other known as your condenser fan motor. So Y and C are going to go to the coil on your contactor and it works the same as a relay. So once the coil is energized with the voltage, a magnetic field is going to be created and your contactor is going to close and send line voltage to your compressor and in many cases your compressor and your condenser fan motor. So now your outdoor unit's running and also your indoor unit's running with the fan. And there you go. You now have air conditioning. Next, let's go over our heating function. It works very similar to our cooling function. So, R and C, constant power. This comes directly off your transformer, specifically the secondary of your transformer, which is gonna be the lower voltage. This is a low voltage thermostat, and for the most part, most thermostats do work off 24 volts. So, if we set our thermostat to heat, R, our hot wire from our secondary of the transformer, our 24 volts, is gonna relay power to W. At the same time, because we're in auto, R is gonna send power to G as well, which is our indoor fan motor. But depending on the application, there might be a delay as to when G will energize. And this is because if you have an electric heater and it's set for that, so your fan's gonna start right away along with your, your heat wire. They're, they're gonna start right away. But sometimes when you have a furnace, you don't wanna start the fan right away. And that is because you're still gonna blow cold air. You don't wanna blow cold air in the space that you want heating. So there's times where there's, there's delays, there's other controls. We're not gonna get too far into it, but sometimes there is a delay so that this starts when there's actually heat that you can push out. Because if not, you're gonna be blowing cold air and nobody wants that. It's gonna make the space colder. So let's go over exactly what happens. It's basically the same thing that happens in the cooling, except now the W wire is gonna go to your heating so R is gonna relay power to W, and it's gonna relay to G. So both of these are gonna be sending power out and they're gonna be coming back and completing the circuit through C. So W and C, and then G and C. W is gonna to go to whatever type of heater that you have, and it's gonna start that. When you think about it, and now have this explanation, you can see your thermostat is just a large relay. It's your controller and it's just a large relay. Once you understand the principles of relays, you're really gonna understand control circuits. I do have many videos that I made with my training board on how to check relays, how to check contactors, how to check transformers, how to check thermostats with voltage and a whole bunch of other methods. So I definitely recommend you check that out. I'm going to leave some pop-ups in this video along with some links in this video's description. If anyone is curious on how to troubleshoot the components in a control circuit for an air conditioning or refrigeration system, definitely check out the video's description. In the description, I'm going to leave some links below and I do have testing videos of this exact training board as this does come alive and everything does operate. So definitely check that out. But I do hope that you now know and understand how a thermostat operates. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to share with your colleagues and friends.
and I'll catch you all next time. Thank you.